hello there. I'm going to change up the style of these podcasts a little bit. I'm, I'm going to avoid doing some little pre-recorded intro thing. I'm going to, I won't do a bumper, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to just basically do a little quick intro or maybe an outro. I haven't decided yet. And then we'll kind of lead into the topic. Most likely an intro because I don't want it to ruin the intent of the topic when I'm doing them, right? Because if I'm talking about something thought-provoking and then doing an outro, you know, it kind of ruins the moment. Letting you guys in into the into the brain here. So, anyways, um, yeah, before we get into the topic today, I just wanted to say appreciate the love and, and the compliments and, and all the feedback I've gotten thus far. Um, if you guys have topics that you want my dumb interpretation of, or if maybe you want to have it back and forth, send me a message, DM, email, whatever you want, and then we can kind of have a little back and forth. That'd be fun. I think sometimes uh, that helps in, in acquiring perspective when it comes to different topics because not everybody comes at a table with the same views on things and perspective on life. And so it's always good to kind of have a little bit back and forth, which it's difficult to do on this medium, but I'm willing to try. Um, what else did I want to talk about today? I felt like I was in a good, in a good, uh, in a good kind of uploading schedule. Um, and then I kind of got derailed because I had to do work on a day. I don't usually have to work. So it derailed my whole thing. So the goal is to kind of get back on schedule. Um, and shout out to, uh, to everybody kind of sticking to it and providing that feedback. Cause I think sometimes that's helpful and in a way motivating to, improve upon the process so with that being said this is going to be a little short intro intro to let you guys know what's going to happen here and um here's the episode yo what's going on ladies and gentlemen so i've been thinking a lot about social media and we'll get to why I've been thinking about it shortly. That'll be the topic, I guess, of today's um, podcast. But social media is fascinating because in many respects, it's a double-edged sword. It's a, a sword, for, uh, an edge for positivity and an edge for negativity, right? And, and it's up to you to decide what you're subscribing to and what side you're getting cut with the most, right? Um, depending on your likes or your tendencies to go towards certain things, you might be consuming far more negativity than positivity or vice versa. But, you know, it's a fi- fascinating thing because I have, I've, I've had to give it a lot of thinking, a lot of thought. And there's been many phases in my social media consumption where I've been consumer, more, more producer, more um, consumed a lot of negative shit, a lot of positive shit. And, you know, we're, it's, it's always a ebb and flow of what you're doing right but i'm trying to be very conscious of the things i consume one of the beautiful things one of the in the things of positivity the blade of positivity right is that you get to kind of connect with people right but that only happens really when i say that when you're a personal account of any sort in my mind when you're a social media account you're a number of things you're either a business where you're trying to sell products you're either a person where you're trying to share your life or you're a weird kind of amalgamation of the two. I'm just trying to figure out where my account is. My account's probably the weird amalgamation, to be honest with you. But there's a lot of personal shit in there, right? So I find it fascinating because, you know, I have people that follow me that are business accounts, right? That they're just there because they're following me because they want to... Um, want for me to follow back and I've been in the social media game long enough where I'm just I'm not playing those games I can care less with that being said I also have a lot of um, people that follow me that I know right on a personal basis and some I don't but some I don't most of them I know from a personal basis and and that's the beauty in social media you can connect with people you can keep track of people and see how that sounds weird keep track you can follow people and see how they're doing in life and maybe um feel like you're 
connecting with them to a certain degree, but I still think you're not making that level of connection that you would if you had a phone call or text message chain with them, right? But I find it fascinating because I think for some people, it it's the bare minimum you can do to feel like you're still keeping contact with someone, right? If How do I say this without outing people that I'm talking about? And it's very likely that the person I'm talking about doesn't listen to this, so I could probably say who or maybe how I know them, but I won't. So, because I don't want people to get offended. But ultimately, my point to this is saying, like, it's fascinating that that we get we get to kind of see and interact with people, right? And everybody has different perspectives and views on interactions, and I get that, right? Everybody has a reasoning for doing what they do. Some are from good reasons where they're trying to stay low key because of experiences they've had in the past. Some do it because they're salty MFers and they don't want to support what you do, but they want to keep an eye on you, right? But then, you know, you also have like the people that feel like they're not anywhere in those camps. And those are the people I find somewhat fascinating because saltiness I can understand, right? Not because I'm uber salty myself. I have been at some points in my life, 100%. I'll never lie to you and tell you I haven't. But I've been there before, so I understand it. The middle people are the fascinating ones to me. Because those to me are people that have not analyzed themselves enough to figure out why they do certain things. So let me give you some examples. I post stories on a normal basis, right? And I know my stories aren't for everyone. I know that not everybody cares about the bills that I'm doing and the projects that I'm doing. And I get it. It might not be your thing. I 100% get it, okay? If you're a person that's into, I don't know, what's something I find not interesting? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Something I find not interesting, fill in the blank, right? If, you're, if that's your interest, yeah, maybe I might not watch all of your stories. Cool, okay? Cool. I, I, I get it. So I'm not interest, interested in, in, in being mad at people for not following my shit. What I find fascinating is the people that follow your shit, I'm using cuss words, uh-oh, that follow your stuff and view your stories but never interact with your posts. Those are the people I find most interesting. And those I would likely put maybe in the salty camp. That's not the people I'm talking about today because those I would definitely put into the salty camp because unless you have a legitimate reason, which I've had conversations with people about those legitimate reasons, then I get, right? I'm going to talk about other people. We're going to get to that point, the person I'm talking about specifically in a second. But I can see who views my stuff because that's the way stories are designed. I can tell the people that maybe view it And once again, like, I'll never know, right? People could just be filtering through my stuff and not really watching it, but it shows his watch. But I can tell the people that are consistently, like, filtering through or cleaning up their feed and or people who are watching. I can can see those people. And I see the same consistency in the same people, which to those people, you the real ones, shout out to all you guys, right? I appreciate that. You, Everybody has a certain amount of time in the day. And if you're spending any sort of time keeping up with my stuff, it's appreciated. Thank you. And hopefully it's interesting and worthwhile for you and you're getting something out of it. But there there are those people that watch all my shit and then I'll make a post and never like it for whatever reason, right? And I can tell that there are certain reasons why certain people wouldn't do it. I won't go into those. But there are some people that fuck, how do I say this without, without saying too much? I can see basically seeing my stuff, right? So I, I know who interacts with my stuff and who doesn't. And it's very fascinating to see, which I don't judge you for not liking my stuff. I'm never going to be the guy that's like, well, you're not watching my stories and you're not liking my shit. You know, I've, I've, I've done that with ye old captain and I still don't get the captain's logic, to be honest with you. And I'm not going to say shout out to the captain. It's more of a put down to the captain. But it is what it is, right? He is who he is. But I found it funny. And, and, and this is kind of leading up to the person I'm trying to talk about. And I'm sure there's more of these people. 
But this one was a blatant disregard. Some of you are like, get to the fucking point. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Some people are blatant about the way they do it. It's hilarious. So the other day, I was on social media, and I follow someone who I know from certain activities. Won't say who, but that should give you an inclination if you know me. And they follow me, and they very obviously look at all my stories. I'm aware of this because, once again, shout out to the real ones. I see you. They follow all my stories. And so then I go through my stories. And I go through my stories in, in this normal, typical fashion. And they had a post up that said something along the lines of, be wary of people who constantly keep an eye on what you're doing but don't compliment or support you, right? That's a story they chose to post on their social media, right? They don't like any of my posts. <laughs> That's a dangerous mindset to have. That salty mindset of, of, of being salty, right? So much so that you're choosing to voice maybe some sort of internal voice through a quote via your social media, but then also not being aware of yourself to a degree that you don't realize that you yourself are guilty of that thing, right? That's a fascinating one for me because I'm trying to think like I don't typically post quotes and if I do, they're not anything like how do I describe this without insulting people? When you see these quotes on social media, they typically, to me, come off like a, I'm voicing something that I'm kind of going through. That's how it comes off. And I've had conversations with many of people where they feel the same way. The, the, you see it stereotypically, very commonly, I suppose, in 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 relationships when people have broken up or people are, are getting together mostly when they're broken up let's be honest they get into these quotes where they're like you never deserve me and yeah da, da, da. like right you see them you've seen them i've seen them i've seen them a million times i kind of laugh because it's like dude you are projecting to the world your closeted sh stuff right that's 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 typically the way i take those relationship posts and so I don't typically go that route, right? I've been on social media for a very long time. I don't typically go that route because I'm a fairly private person, as you guys have told, uh, figured out probably from this podcast, and I don't like to voice out my relationship drama out to everyone. You got to go through your feelings. We talked about that in one of the previous podcasts. Go through your feelings, but venting about your partner and how they weren't up to the task or whatnot, right? And putting that on social media doesn't always come off right in my mind. And then also, it looks hella hypocritical when you go back with that partner, right? So, to, to backtrack, I don't feel like I ever do those type of quotes. If I do any sort of quotes, I feel like it's typically something thought-provoking or hopefully motivational. And the reason why I do that is because in my lifetime, the most... One of the most valuable things in, for me in my lifetime has been thought-provoking ideas. Consuming and blending objects and ideas in my mind. That way I can get some sort of concept or understanding or perspective on things. That has been huge. I can't even describe to you how big that has been in my lifetime has been life-changing, if anything, in my lifetime. And so if I can post a little thing that kind of gives you something to think about and maybe gives you some, some perspective on things or maybe gives you some sort of whatever, whatever, it's worth doing. It's worth doing in my mind, right? And I did that, I think, recently with a post where I made about this, this woman who was so, so distraught and broken at the idea that her husband was taking so long making baby bottles because he wanted a break from you know parenting or whatever so he would take so long and the article talked about her being like oh how could I ever how can I ever forgive him how can I ever trust him again right 
And then literally afterwards, I make a post about what's going on in Ukraine, right? Because to me, in my mind, and this will be a topic in the future, is perspective is sobering. Perspective on what you're living through isn't the biggest deal in the world. There's often times that you can think or find another thing in the world that's happening that's far more difficult. And while I want to give that woman credit because I'm sure she's going through postmenopausal hormone situations, right? At the same time, you know, choosing to take it back to the topic, choosing to go to social media and venting your opinions about this and feeling like this is a the most shocking thing you, you've ever experienced is a Hail Mary of a pass. For those that don't know football, that's when you throw the ball really far and it was a really good play because you cross so many lines. Anyways, that's my point. So I don't typically go that route when it comes to my, my posts, right? But this person, I won't say who they are, I found it fascinating that they chose to go, I'm going to be very fascinated to see if they still follow me after this video, after this podcast. I found it fascinating that they chose to go that route, right? Because that's a very common post now on social media, right? Like you get that whole like, yo, bro, you see this in the, the people working out videos and they're like, yo, bro, yeah, they might not, they might not like your stuff, but they're definitely watching. If you post a video or, or uh, what are they called on Instagram? They're not, um, they're not like ticky tackies. They're, they're um, a reel, I think they're called. If you post a reel, you'll get tons of views. But when you post a picture, you only get like a little bit of likes. Like that's that very popular um, post right now. That's a very popular like view on things. I'm like, well, look, we're not comparing apples to apples, okay? Your post isn't. Tick tackies, ticky tackies are, are designed in a way to keep your attention. I even get sucked into those way too much. And you'll click on a video and it'll be something funny and then it scrolls to the next one. If something funny happens, scrolls to the next one, right? It, Instagram is trying to keep you there on a long period of time. So it goes over, goes over. So these things get a ton of views because they're just being circled in a feed of similar things so people could get, stay on the, on the app. That's the way they're designed. They're designed to keep you there and have you there for as long as possible. So yeah, that happens, okay? I post a picture and I'll be freaking frank with you guys because I don't give one shit. I'll post a picture on my social media about a project I've done and I get less than 20 likes. I even wanna say I get less than 10 likes. How about that? How about that for fucking honesty, right? But then I will go and post a ticky tacky or what they call reels in Instagram. I'll post a ticky tacky, what I call ticky tackies. I post that and that'll, especially when it's a car thing, and that'll get thousands of views. So let's, let's be honest about what's going on here. That's not an apples to apples comparison. That's just the algorithm feeding things down people's throats. That's why it gets thousands more views than my single picture gets. Even if we're talking about car to car comparison, picture of my car, video, little ticky tacky video reel about my car. Same thing, thousands more views, okay? So while that's a very popular mindset to have now, I found this post very fascinating because this person chooses to do post this post, right? Wanting to feel like, oh, I don't get enough likes or maybe these people are watching but they're not liking my shit. But at the same time, this person hasn't liked one of my pictures in a very long time. And for the record, I did not go back and look. I, I Look, I, it's very simple to figure out that if I get less than 10 pictures, likes on my pictures, I can kind of tell who's liking my shit. So I'm no, for the record, I didn't go back and look. I won't even do that now because I don't want to spend the time. But my point in saying this is be conscious about what you're doing on social media and how you're coming off. Because that to me came off very salty and hypocritical. And you can't be aware that the things that you're feeling could potentially be the thing that you're doing. And I guess the ultimate idea, the ultimate thought behind this is be aware of yourself. Do some deep dives in yourself. That doesn't sound right. Do some deep dives in your head about your actions and, and what you're doing. And when you're putting these, these, these posts 
online about these, these things that you're voicing your feelings about. Start asking yourself the difficult questions, whether or not you are yourself are guilty of these things. Because one of my pet peeves in life is hypocrites. That's a huge pet peeve in my life. I don't like hypocrisy. I don't like it. With that being said, because that's a pet peeve, when I find myself in the hypocrisy room, I am very difficult on myself. I'm very hard on myself because then I feel like a piece of shit. My point to all this is definitely be aware of what you're putting out there on social media, number one. Be willing to be vulnerable with yourself because if you can't be vulnerable and honest with yourself, then what are you doing with your relationships and your families and your, and your, and your professions, right? Be willing to be vulnerable with yourself and be honest on whether or not you yourself are doing this thing that you're vulnerable, that you're, that you're feeling in your feelings about, that you're being Drake about. How about that? You know, it's, it's, social media can be a very beautiful thing. But very quickly, when we get into scenarios where you're voicing your feelings, even though your feelings are not cemented, as we talked about a previous podcast, your feelings are not cemented because you yourself are guilty of the exact same thing. And then you're voicing out to the world. What are you putting out? Which, which two sides of the sword are you putting out in those posts? And be honest with yourself. Do you think you're putting out posts of positivity in those? Or are you putting out more negativity? And is it more negative because you yourself are guilty of that thing? That's it. That's your food for thought for the day. Hopefully that was uh, worthwhile. And I'll talk to you guys next time.